Magandang araw, Dubmates! This demonstration will focus on special techniques in hunting specific chemicals. Alam naman natin na sa laboratorio, ang isa sa mga binibigyan diin ng ating maburo sa tuwing mayroong gagawing eksperimento ay kailangan ng iba yung pag-iingat sa paghahawak ng mga chemical, maging ito man ay nakakalason o hindi. Ang iyong matutungayan ay hindi lang tungkol sa kalaman ng pag-iingat sa tamang paggamit at paghahawak ng chemical, kundi ito ay nakatuon sa mga wasto at ilang partikular na pamamaraan sa paghahawak ng mga chemical. In hunting reagents or chemicals, Primary consider its nature. Aside from the basic safety rules like labeling all containers and the use of personal protective equipment and others, the following are necessary specific techniques to ensure safety and avoid contamination. Una sa lahat, pag gamit ng mawawakan ng isang particular na chemical, mahalagang alamin kung ano ang pagkakakilanlan nito. Sorry, mabuti ang nakasaad sa mga detalye sa etiketa. First technique, transferring chemicals to another vessel. When pouring liquid chemicals from bottles with volumes greater than 5 mm, they can be poured directly into vessels. Graduated cylinders and beakers have an intention in their mouth, so they can be poured controllably as long as the two pieces of glass touch one another. If pouring from an iron mail plus or transferring a liquid into a vessel containing a narrow mouth, a panel should be used. Funnels can be securely held with a ring clamp or held with one hand while pouring with the other. The label should always face upward to prevent any spillage from destroying the label. A steering rod can also be utilized when transferring a liquid chemical to a narrow mouth container such as bottles. For solid chemicals, avoid pouring powder from bottles as the powder can collect on the neck threads and spill onto the bottle surfaces when the cup is replaced. Always use appropriate spatula for dispensing. Never leak spatulas, stealers, or other objects into the dispensing bottles or chemicals. Remove the contents by pouring and rolling the contents of the glass into a beaker, glass container, or other suitable glasswares. Spatulas may be used with a caution in laboratory reagent bottles. Do not use metal spatula in mixing corrosive substances. For the second technique, the use of fume boots. Always utilize the fume boots available in its laboratory. Fumes producing chemicals must be dispensed in the safety equipment. When using a fume boot, the sash should always be pulled down in front of the user's space to protect the breathing zone and to ensure proper airflow to the work opening. Conduct all work at least 6 inches inside the edge of the fume boot. For the next technique, handling concentrated acids. When handling concentrated acids, the dilution of acid should be performed by pouring the acid into water while continuously stirring. This is because acid and water react in a vigorous exothermic reaction, releasing heat that causes the liquid to boil and splashing concentrated acid. For example, the dilution of sulfuric acid. It slowly pour the acid passing through the glass rod into the water. This process will avoid the solution to boil due to the increasing temperature. Steer it simultaneously to avoid a layer of concentrated acid forming at the bottom of the beaker, creating a temperature gradient. Another technique, handling concentrated bases. For making a strong base solution like sodium hydroxide, never add water into it because it will react violently and may splatter. Instead, add sodium hydroxide slowly into water. Glassware should be used with caution because it may break due to the heat release when the base reacts. And because there are fumes formed while mixing, work in a well-ventilated area or in the fume mode and don't inhale the fumes. Next technique, heating chemicals. In handling chemicals that require heating, do not heat flammable liquids with an open flame. Steam baths, sand baths, oil baths, and heating mantles are preferable. When heating chemicals in small or large volumes, introduce heat gradually and evenly to the desired temperature. Always be aware of the temperature ranges to avoid overheating, which can be dangerous as well as destructive and wasteful. For handling microbiology media, the following techniques are recommended. Heat to boil agar powders until it is dissolved completely before autoclaving. It is best to pour agar that is about 50 degrees Celsius 
If it is cooler than that, it will tend to form bubbles that quickly solidify. Swirl the media again to mix before the pouring. Be careful not to incorporate bubbles. If you pour the agar and get lots of bubbles, try gently passing a flame over the surface of the agar plate. The heat of the flame will pop the bubbles. To prevent condensation of water in plates, let them solidify and dry at room temperature until the lids are free from moisture. Store plates upside down in a refrigerator of cold room temperature. For handling light sensitive chemicals, amber glass bottles for most light sensitive chemicals are the best choice to protect the active ingredients and contents inside the bottle from UV light. Amber glass absorbs the most comprehensive range of light waves of the light spectrum. Minimize overexposure of light sensitive chemicals by manipulating them in a dim working area. To avoid contamination, once removed from the bottle or glass, cut stoppers or screw cups must be placed on a clean surface like wash glass and other suitable equipment with the opening facing down. This to avoid contamination of the compound and unnecessary exposure.